Hey there folks, this is Hellbent and welcome to the second tutorial for the graphical user interface for Auto Hotkey. In this tutorial we're going to go over buttons quickly. So let's just jump into it. First thing I'm going to do is add in a single instance for so that way I don't have to constantly <clears throat> tell it to uh, that I do want to run a new instance. So single instance force at the very bottom. I am going to add in a hotkey to exit. Even though I do not need this, it is a habit that I like to have of always having an emergency exit. <clears throat> okay, next we're going to create our GUI. Now, from this point forward, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start breaking up the different sections of the script. So I'm going to create a section just for the GUI layout and I'm gonna highlight it so that way if my script gets very long I can find the different sections pretty easily by seeing this next what I'm gonna do is because we're gonna be using buttons we also need labels so I'm gonna have a section for labels And I'm going to be using a function in this, so I'm going to also create a separate area for functions. Okay, and since we have a hotkey, even though it's only one hotkey, I'm going to add in a section for hotkeys. Because hotkeys are really good for testing, and uh, if I ever get around to doing the functions uh, tutorial, you'll see that. Okay, there we go. Now we can arrange our script into different sections so that way we can navigate it pretty easily. The first thing I want to do is add in my GUI comma show, which is going to actually display my GUI. So I want a width of 500. It's just a nice number to start with. And then I can customize it from there. And then a title, and I'm just going to call this the GUI. Okay, and then after that, we need a return. And let's position it. So I don't want it to constantly pop up the GUI right in the center. I want it over here a little bit so that way I can have it up while I'm working on it. So I'm going to put an X location of somewhere around 800, 850-ish for my screen. And a Y close to the top of, let's say, about 50 and we'll have a look and see what that does okay so there we go it's out of the way and <clears throat> the first thing we need to do is we're gonna change first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna change its color because I like having a nice background on it so we're gonna change GUI color and we're gonna have it black now with a lot of the colors that you can use by word for example, if I change this to pink, it's actually going to change that GUI to black. So I don't actually know if black is a valid color or if it's just putting changing it to black just because it's uh, not a valid color. Um, but if I'm reading through my GUI, at least here I can actually see that this is the color that I want it to be. So anyways, there we go. we got a black GUI. And let's make it so that way it stays on top. So GUI and then plus always on top. And we'll save that. And there we go. Now we can keep it up on top while we're working. And we're going to need some, I'm going to add in a text. So what I need is to make the font color, the text color to be white. I can make it anything I want, but let's do black, on, white on black. So GUI font, and then C for color, and then the color I want. And I did go over most of this stuff on the first tutorial. So if you're, if you want more details about this stuff, make sure you watch the first one. Okay, so let's add in our button. So it's just like with our text, but actually, you know what, let's add in the text first. So GUI, 
add text and then a position on our GUI so let's just go with x10 y10 and then my text so let's say press the button okay and we'll check that out okay so there we go so now we need a button to press so just like with the the text it's GUI and then add and then button and then once again we need an X and a Y location but <clears throat> if we leave it as is it's just gonna drop down to the next location underneath and it's gonna add in a default which is something like 10 or 12 so it'll be like a, a 10 X and a 10 Y high something like that if you look here maybe a little bit higher than that maybe about 12 Maybe about 10 wide, 12 high. I don't know exactly what it is, but it's got a default. And if you don't like the default color of the button and things like that, it's wherever you in your um your windows, it's in your appearance. I think it's in the appearance settings. Like wherever you change this kind of background in the appearance for the windows forms and things like that, that will also affect the buttons. So if you want to, there is ways of changing the buttons through scripting, but it's a pain in the ass, and I'm not going to be going into that for quite some time. I will eventually get to that, but for now, no, it's just too much of a pain in the ass. I'm not going to be bothering with that. So if you want to change the buttons, it's in the settings where you change all the Windows forms. <clears throat> okay, so we got our button. Now let's position it. So let's try a few different things. So let's go X100, Y100. And let's have a look at what we have. So there we go. We've changed it. And we can increase its X, which is this line here. So we're going to move it over to the right a little bit. We can move it down a little bit by adding to the Y. Okay, we can go... further. And what we have to be careful about is actually going outside of the GUI's dimensions. So as I can see, I have a width of 500. So if I change this to 550, it's actually going to be outside of my GUI. So something to be, be aware of. So as you can see, I can't see the button. I can't press the button. It's gone. Um, <clears throat> There is a useful use for this kind of thing of putting things outside of the GUI, but that is there's very limited applications for that, and you wouldn't necessarily have to use a button. You could just use a text or things like that. Um, and I'm not going to go into that, but there is there is some useful things you can do by actually putting things outside, some little shortcuts you can do. But anyways, anyways, I don't want to dwell on that because we're not going to be covering that. So we got a button. Let's actually move this up a little bit. So let's go to 2. Now let's go 150. And let's go 150. Okay, so we have our button positioned. And what we can also do is adjust its width. So let's go a width of 200. And we can adjust its height. So let's go a height of 30. So we're going to get a big button. Okay. And after all of this stuff here, we can add in another comma and show the text that we're going to have on it. Okay, so we have our button, but it doesn't do anything. So what we need to do is attach this button to a label. So we got our section for our labels. All we need to do in here is <clears throat> call up that label. So we're going to type in G for go to and then the labels name. And just like naming variables or functions, it's pretty much the same deal. So we want a name that makes sense. It has to all be one string. Um, so if we have space in between words, we need an underscore. So let's go. Um, we want it to make something make sense. So let's go. Let's just I'm just going to call this something stupid first. Now, obviously, normally you're not going to call it something like this. You're going to call it something that makes sense for what it's actually going to be, its function is going to be doing. So, but this is our first button, so I'm going to label it our first button. So down in here, 
we just type in that same label. So our first button. And then beside the name of it, we put in a colon. And there we go. Now we can put in a whole bunch of things in here. So this is what it's going to execute when we press that button. And after it's done executing all of that stuff, it needs to have a return. So what we're going to do, just to be to sure that it's out of the way, so let's say if I'm adding a whole bunch of buttons and their labels all at once before I actually make it do anything, what I'm going to make sure to do is, with its label down here, I'm also going to add in a return. So if I had, another, let's say if I had another label here, I would also add in its return. So that way later on, if I can come back later on and then fill in what it's actually going to be doing, which we're going to do now. Okay, so when we press this button, what we're going to have it do is we're going to have it create a couple of variables. So let's have it create A, the variable A, and A equals 5, and B equals 8. Why not? And then what we're going to have it do is we're going to have it go to a function. So let's create a function that we're going to just going to call add. And we're going to pass some values into it. So let's just pass x and y. And we will fill this in. So what we're going to do is we're going to call this function. We're going to pass it two variables and we're going to have it add them. And then it's going to return that value. So all I need, this is a very simple function. So all I need to do is just return the value of x plus y. There we go. There's our function. We're going to create a function call. So we need a variable now that's actually going to store the value of a plus b. Let's do c. So c equals our add function with and the two th the two things we're going to be passing into it are a and b so there we go and we'll have a message box and we're going to say a plus b equals c there we go i think that's good We'll save that and run it. And so when we press this button, it's going to come into this label and it's going to execute everything that's in here. So there we go. A plus B equals 13. And if we look, 5 plus 8 equals 13. Okay, let me think. Um, I can. I got enough time that I can add in something really quick. Um, okay. Okay, I, I know, I know. Now, if I was to go and close this GUI, if I look here in my hidden icons, I can see that it's running. If I go and close this, it actually hasn't closed the script. All it's done is make it so that way I can't access the GUI anymore. So to fix that, what we're going to do is we're going to create another label for a button that we're not going to necessarily think of as a button, so that you wouldn't think of as a button. So we got this X up here, which is actually a button. So we're going to create a label that's going to, that when we press that button, it's going to do something. And we'll test it out a few different things first. So let's go GUI close. So hidden in this code, hidden from view, there's actually a button that's been added that we can't see. So just like this button here, there's been a button that's added that we can't see in its default properties that are attached to this. And it's got a call to a to a label that it's we haven't added, that we're just adding in now. So we've added the label that's attached to that button, and normally we can't see this. So what we're going to have it do is we're just going to do a message box to demonstrate it first. And we will have a return. Okay, so there we go. And I've, I've never actually tested using a message box in this. Usually I just go right for the punch, but right to the point. But we'll, we'll see what happens. So if I hit that, there we go. So rather than it closing the GUI now, it's actually executing that. 
but we don't want that. What we want it to do is when we close that, we want it to actually exit our app. Okay, so we'll save that, run it, and like I said, we have it in our hidden icons. We, I can see that the script is running. When I close it, it has now exited it. So we don't have to worry about doing a second exit. Okay, I think I think that's good for this tutorial. We'll come back on the next one and we'll go over adding an edit field and how to update the values that are in our GUI. So we'll, let's say if we wanted to change this to something else, we'll, I'll go over that as well as adding in edit fields where you can have a user type in their own thing. All right, so I uh, hope you enjoyed. Be sure to hit that like button to keep these tutorials coming, and I'll see you on the next one.